Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India A very warm welcome to the CSS MOOC course on Science, Technology and Society. It is a course within the discipline of sociology as a whole and in particular sociology of science and technology. But when we look at courses like science, technology and society, we must look at the way these three forces of production namely science, technology and society have evolved over time and across space. Science, technology and society, the sub discipline uh, is a conglomeration of various other disciplines namely philosophy of science, history of science, sociology of science and partially psychology of science. When we talk about philosophy of science, history of science, sociology of science and of course, psychology of science is a recent discipline which I am not going to cover much. In fact, I will be dealing with science, technology and society from three vantage points namely philosophy of science, history of science and sociology of science. Okay. Before entering any formal discussion on STS, I repeat, I reiterate the point that we must look at the thematic preliminaries which are very much implicit in the relationship between science, technology and society. Now, what is technology? What is science? What is society? Technology, the way we understand always predates modern science. People very often think that no science is prior to the formation of technology, but history of science, philosophy of science, sociology of science always reiterate the point that technology always predates modern science. I, we can give numerous examples, but, but for the time being what we want to look at that how technology, uh, what, are, what are the contours of technology, uh, how a technology has evolved what are the theoretical predicaments of technology. Similarly, we will also look at science and its intellectual and political contours and also and the relationship of technology and science with society. Okay. Then what is a technology? Technology if we look at from the vantage points of historical sociology, political economy, philosophical anthropology then we always find that technology is the medium through which human beings interact with nature. When I say nature, it includes both natural and social phenomena. The way I want to look at technology, this is the perspective that I am using. The perspective is drawn from historical sociology, political economy, philosophical anthropology. Then what is a perspective? A perspective refers to a set of symbols which human beings used to select from all potentially observable aspects of nature. When I again when I say nature, it includes both natural and social phenomena. 
when I say technology um, is the medium through which human beings including us including us as subjects interact with nature there, there also we find some kind of a relationship between human beings and nature. The earlier literature suggests that nature always controls human action, but with the, the rise of enlightenment, critical thinking, modernity, reasoning capacity and industrial revolution, we always witness that no nature does not control human action, rather human action controls nature there we see a shift in the faculty of contemplation to a faculty of control. Human beings not only change nature, but also change the social relationships implicit. As Marx argued that um, by acting upon nature, human beings not only change nature, but also change themselves as social actors. Then let us come to what constitutes science. Okay. Science can be delineated through various uh, modes. Science may be an inquiry, science may be a method, science may be an institution, science may be an ideology, science may be a transition from the world of unknowability to the world of knowability. When I say science is an inquiry, science is an inquiry into the nature and limits of a particular knowledge that is scientific knowledge. When I say science is an inquiry into the nature of a particular knowledge, by nature of a particular knowledge, I mean the subject matter of knowledge, the scope and ambit of that particular knowledge. But when I say limits of a particular knowledge, I do not mean limitations. By limits, I mean under what limiting conditions science is practiced or pursuit. Even a set theory has limits. In mathematics, uh, in uh, set, what is a set theory? The set theory is, is a branch of mathematical logic. If you look at even a set theory, if I say uh, women, I can say they, there may be many subsets. I can say American women, I can say African women, I can say Asian women. Even a subset called Asian women can also depict many other subsets. Then when I, I mean Indian women, Chinese women, uh, Japanese women, Pakistani women and so on. When I say women here, I pose some, some limiting conditions, not limitations. In this context, science is an inquiry into the, into the nature and limits of a particular knowledge that is scientific knowledge. Science is also a method. Very often what we encounter is that the objective of science and the objective of non sciences. The objective of science is to arrive at the truth. The objective of say religion is also to arrive at the truth, but they are different. The objective does not make a distinction between science and religion, rather it is the method which distinguishes science from religion. Science does not make speculation the way religion does. Science believes in the empirical and rationalist methods of inquiry. When I say empirical, I mean it is based on experience. When I say rationalist method, I mean it is based on reason. We will discuss these two methods of inquiry, two methods of science in the lectures to follow, when we will be discussing methods of science. Okay? I mean it is the method that makes a distinction between science and religion. Science does not believe in any kind of speculative philosophy, rather science always starts with verifiable facts. If I say I have seen a ghost, it does not imply that 
a, a, a religious person may accept this, but a, but a person of science will never accept this, precisely because it is the method that uh, makes a distinction between science and religion. Science always believes in observable and verifiable facts. After discussing science as an inquiry as well as science as a method, let us come to a point where we can say science as an institution. After discussing science as an inquiry as well as science as a method, let us come to a point where we can say science as an institution, science as a social institution, science as a political institution. Okay? The way we, we witness science as a social institution, science as a political institution, we will also discuss this, this particular component of science as a social institution when we discuss Mortonian ethos of science, Robert Morton. Okay? I mean, uh, uh, what kind of norms science follows or should follow? There is a prescriptive matter, there is a normative matter to uh, science as an institution. Science as, an, uh, science as a social institution as Merton envisaged that ought to follow the principles of universalism, communism, disinterestedness and organized skepticism. When we say science as a social institution, science as a political institution also we can say, but when we look at uh, science as a so, so, political institution also we can look at the way uh, Nazi science was propagated by Hitler during the second world war. Okay. We will we'll come to th this point later on when we talk about uh, uh, science and technology having political properties, the way science can be a part of the state, technology can be a part of the state both science and technology can be the offshoots of the state, byproducts of the state. Then we can we will discuss these things. Science also is an ideology. Going back to Nazi science which I referred to, science also becomes a part of ideology. Science is treated as an ideology. How you propagate your ideology is through propagating through science. That is what uh, Hitler did uh, during his regime, during his horrendous regime uh, uh, during the second world war in Germany. Okay? Science also is a transition from the world of unknowability to the world of knowability. Science teaches us how to move a transition from darkness to light. Science also teaches us how to move from the world of unknowns to the world of knowns. Science also teaches us how to, how to create, how to, how to question, how to interrogate the existing structures and substructures, which other forms of inquiry may not be able to do. Science only teaches us how to create a space, how to create a space to accommodate different perspectives, different opinions. There is no linear thing about science. This linearity has to be questioned, even if it has such linearity within science has been questioned by philosophers of science, historians of science and sociologists of science. Let us see how uh, till now what we have discussed, we will see. Okay? What we have discussed till now? We have discussed how, what is a technology, what is science? And then we will see how they are interrelated. Okay? When we see the, the relationship of technology and science, 
technology is very often known as the act of doing and science is known as the act of knowing. Then this act of knowing and act of doing they must go hand in hand. We cannot isolate the act of doing or act of knowing to uh, or we cannot treat them in isolation. They are mutually influenced, they are correlated. Okay? Many, many uh, people very often say that uh, the science is basic whereas, technology is applied. We must be able to question these, uh, uh, these inferences. Our inference is that technology predates modern science. Technology also can all, all um, technology also predates modern science in the sense. Let me give you an example. This first, the steam engine was invented, and then we encountered the laws of thermodynamics. I mean, technology also changes the direction of basic research. Uh, that is why uh, an eminent uh, uh, theoretical physicist uh, Abdus Salem uh, from Pakistan once said uh, today's basic science will be tomorrow's applied science and vice versa. Even applied science also changes the direction of the principles of basic sciences. Okay? In this context what we are trying to do these these themes that uh, science technology and society as emanating from the, the conglomeration of three disciplines uh, of philosophy of science, history of science and sociology of science that uh, uh, one may have questions about philosophy of science, history of science, sociology of science. What is philosophy of science? The question philosophy of science is as old as science itself. The question the method of science, what is the method of science is as old as science itself. In fact, such questions were posed by Aristotle long back. That we try to construe philosophy of science is an inquiry into the nature and limits of a particular knowledge that is scientific knowledge. Historical history of science is an inquiry into the nature and limits of a particular knowledge guided by history, guided by the methods of history. It may be archival research, it may be historical research, it may be library research and so on. And it may, it may also be empirical history, which are guided by our experiences. When we talk about sociology of science, it is an inquiry into the nature and limits of a particular knowledge guided by social and political institutions. There, there, are, there are very various examples of social institutions, political institutions and so on. If I say political institution, it may refer to the state. When I say social institutions, social institutions may be in the form of family, may be in the form of marriage, may be in the form of kinship and so on. Okay. Social institutions, the way we see the formation of IITs, the way we have seen the formation of CSIR labs, the way we have seen the formation of universities, they are also part of social institutions. They are educational institutions, they also form certain norms, values and so on. There is, there is a difference between norm and a rule. Okay. Uh, in sociology, what we say uh, rule, uh, if I say uh, please keep to the left, walk on the left hand side of the road, I mean that is a rule which is legally bound. When I say norm, norms evolve upon social acceptance, they, they may not be legally bound at times, okay. but rules are always legally bound. In this sense, we are talking about social institutions, political institutions, they have their norms, values, institutional frameworks, institutional mandates. Uh, uh, for, for example, the, the institutional mandate uh, of, this, uh, of the state may be to provide uh, uh, 
uh, maybe pro maybe uh, to provide welfare measures for the development of a society for its citizens. But if you look at the value system, the the, the values that the state has, uh, it may coincide with the existing institutional framework. It may not coincide at times. In this sense, we are using this. Okay. Now, what till now what we have discussed very very quickly I will I will tell you that we have just discussed technology, science and the relationship between technology and science. We have not yet discussed the, the relationship of technology and science with society, we will discuss it a little while later. Okay. Okay. Now, as we have already discussed what is a perspective, uh, that the perspectives on science, technology and society that the relationship now we are trying to build. Okay. Prana Fasi, what is a perspective? A perspective refers to a set of symbols which human beings used to select from all potentially observable aspects of nature. When I say nature, I repeat it includes both natural and social phenomena. Whenever I speak about a perspective, there are three things which must be kept in mind. One, selection, two, organization of perceptions and the way and thirdly the way these two components selection and organization of perceptions they guide our actions. That is why a perspective is a viewpoint that helps us in selecting, organizing our perceptions and guiding our actions. There is a difference between a perception and a perspective. A perception is the, the, the immediate contact that individuals have with nature, immediate contact. Again, when I say nature, it includes both natural and social phenomena, those that immediate contact must be tested right or wrong, those that immediate contact that we have it may be tested wrong that is why I gave you the example of that I have seen a ghost. Okay? That is the immediate contact that we have with our immediate surrounding, our immediate environment, but that may be proved wrong, that may be tested wrong. That is why it is, there is a need to have a perspective, that is why there is, there is a need to organize our perceptions to arrive at a perspective. And there should not be any single perspective, there must be multiple perspectives. A single perspective will be undemocratic, a single perspective is, uh, uh, is inimical to the formation of a democratic society, whereas multiple perspectives will lead us how to have a more humane society, more democratic society. Okay. There are three models, there are three perspectives in general, it does not imply that there cannot be other perspectives, there may be multiple perspectives at hand, but overall in the schema of STS science, technology and society, what we are trying to do, we are trying to formulate three perspectives or three models. One the linear model, two the interactionist model, three the embedded model. Let us see what these three models of the relationship between science, technology and society indicate. Let us go by one by one. The linear model suggests that science leads to the development of technology, 
and technology leads to the development of society. They followed an erroneous formula that no, it always starts with basic science, basic science leads to the application of those, the, those basic sciences and which will have uh, uh, enormous uh, um, impact on society, on social formation. Okay. If you look at the interactionist model, it suggests that science leads to the development of technology, technology also leads to the development of society, in turn society also leads to the development of technology and science. Then what is the similarity between the linear model and the interactionist model? The difference one can easily observe that in the linear or hierarchical model, it is also known as hierarchical model of the relationship between science, technology and society. This linear model suggests that there is a one way relationship between science, technology and society. There is one way interaction between science, technology and society, whereas the interactionist model suggests no, uh, uh, there is a two way relationship between science, technology and society. A particular that is why uh, we always say that uh, no science and technology uh, may not be considered universal. Uh, uh, if they are considered universal, then perhaps all countries will have similar kind of science and technology policies. The kind of science policies that US has, India may not have that kind of policy. The, the kind of uh, uh, science policies the erstwhile Soviet Union had, India may not afford to have that kind of science and technology policy. It is, an, uh, it is a different question that can India have an independent science and technology policy that we will discuss towards the end of this course. Okay. But what is the similarity then? The first one suggests the linear model suggests that there is a, a one way relationship. The second one the interactionist model suggests no there is a two way relationship. Now, then what is the similarity? The similarity between the linear model and the interactionist model of the relationship between science, technology and society is that they tr both these models treat science, technology and society as separate entities, whereas, whereas the embedded model suggests that no they are not separate entities rather the relationship between science and technology is symbiotic, they are the, the, the two forces of production namely science and technology they are, uh, they are very much a part of society. Okay. If you look at the first two models linear and interactionist model, they exhibit the internalist account of science, which, uh, which is informed by objectivity, neutrality, atemporality, universality, invariance and so on. Perhaps for this reason Karl Mannheim one of the founders of sociology of science and technology wrote uh, in ideology and utopia that uh, all knowledge except scientific knowledge is socially and culturally conditioned. I must emphasize the way he uh, Mart, uh, 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 Mannheim uh, suggested that all knowledge except scientific knowledge is socially and culturally conditioned. I mean then science becomes superior, science is objective, science does not take, take upon any kind of uh, subjective factors, science is neutral, science is atemporal, I mean science does not vary across time and space, science is universally conditioned, science does not vary, science is invariant. Okay. As against such such internalist account of science guided by linear and interactionist model, the embedded model suggests that no, this interactionist model does not hold true. The, the embedded model suggests that science and technology are very much a part of society, social formation uh, 
as against such inter internalist account of science the way embedded model has given us this externalist account of science. David Bloor said in knowledge and social imagery in 1976 that uh, he opposed the, the, the statement of uh, Mannheim that all knowledge except scientific knowledge is socially and culturally conditioned rather Bloor said no all knowledge including scientific knowledge is socially cost. Again Kuhn said Thomas Kuhn in the structure of scientific revolutions of 1962 it is uh, it is one of the best uh, references uh, uh, in the world of STS studies uh, that uh, science should be seen in terms of its historical integrity. Even before this once Marx said what is science? Science is a social creation. Science is not uh, an abstract creation uh, 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 of some excellent uh, I mean uh, it is not uh, it is always a byproduct of uh, human action. Okay? Human action mediated by social norms, social values, uh, social institutions. Now, what we have discussed till now? What we have discussed? We started with uh, what is technology? Then what is science? The relationship between technology and science? Then we have discussed the relationship of science and technology with society and then we have discussed three models, three perspectives which we have taken the, uh, to discuss this relationship between science, technology and society namely the linear model, the interactionist model and the embedded model. Now, we can also uh, 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 we can also have other models of inquiry. I will say uh, let, let me say that uh, this, this kind of debate which has given rise to this uh, that uh, no whether we must go ahead with uh, internalist account of science or externalist account of science can be seen in many works. You can look at the journals like Minerva, uh, Social Studies of Science, uh, uh, Science Technology and Human Values uh, which have always given us uh, the impetus that this debate is still on. With, with specific reference to India, one also can look at many things. One can look at uh, with specific reference to India, when I say uh, you, you can look at objectivity subjectivity uh, debate with specific reference to India, I mean in the philosophy of science by Del Ripe. Okay. Uh, we can also give, I can, we can give examples uh, of the construction of a technology, social construction of a technology, social shaping of technology. Okay. This internalism, externalism debate within STS is still on. What we want to do now is that how to mediate these two? Can we just say that no, we will go ahead with only internalist debate, internalist account of science? Can we just say no, we should go ahead with only externalist account of science? No, uh, 